In real life, we don't store all of our possessions just out in the open. For example, it'd be pretty weird if I had a whole bunch of clothes, hardware, or just kind of other miscellaneous objects scattered on the headsets that you see behind me. So it only makes sense in VR that we're able to tuck away certain key items, tools, or even just random miscellaneous items in things like drawers. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a very simple and smooth drawer that will allow for the player to open and close it and show that physics actors will still work with this drawer so that way players are able to store items in the drawer or you can hide items in the drawer so players have to seek them out and locate certain key items. But before we go ahead and jump into that, if you enjoyed this video and want to see even more just like this one, be sure to like the subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. All right, so let's go ahead and check out this drawer. So as you can see, I have it right here in front of me. These three cubes inside are all physics actors. I won't be showing you how to set this up uh, in this tutorial. I just feel like there's so many different use cases for this drawer and you can honestly have so many different things inside. So just in case you guys are curious, these are just some stack meshes. I set simulate physics on them. And then um, I don't think it was necessary, but I did slightly change their collisions as well. So that way they'll collide with the drawer. And you can see as I move it around, if you move it around pretty slowly, obviously things don't move around uh, as much in here, but you can definitely still see them move if I start moving it back and forth much, much quicker, which is just kind of, I, I mean, it's a little bit more realistic to real life. You open a drawer real quick and you expect for things to go sliding forward. You close it and you expect for things to go sliding back uh, like that. But if you move it pretty slowly, everything just kind of stays in there for the most part. Uh, you, you may have seen that there was a real quick slide there. But I mean, it's just a very simple and easy to use drawer. So we can just kind of move it back and forth and you can see it won't extend past a certain point uh, in either direction. So it stops at a very specific point and I can't move it closer or further to me. I can't move it up and down. It only slides back and forth along this line. So it's a very simple, very nice drawer. It looks pretty smooth. Um, and as you can see, we can have various physics actors in here in order to actually have any sort of key items, tools, um, even just miscellaneous items. You can have them all here in the drawer and have players be able to open and close it uh, as you would like. As you can see, I don't have like anything covering it, so it's not particularly hidden, but you certainly could just put it into some kind of drawer mesh and have a drawer that works pretty smoothly. So let's go ahead and jump into the video and I'll show you how we got all this set up so that way you guys can add this into your own virtual world as well. Before we actually begin working on our drawer actor, let me go and show you the mesh that we're actually going to be using in order to make this drawer work. As you can see, I have this very basic drawer mesh that consists of five cubes and a single cylinder. And then I merged them all together in Unreal Engine just to give us a single mesh. By the way, quick shout out to Chris here who actually helped show me this over on the VR Playground Discord and actually made it so that way I was able to make this model for this specific tutorial. Now that, you, now that we've seen our mesh, let's get to work on the drawer. First, we're going to need an interface. So I'm going to create a folder called Interfaces. And in here, I'm going to create an interface called Grab. Open up this interface and give the interface two functions called Grab and Release. Then make sure each of these functions have a motion controller input. Once you've done this, you can go ahead and close out of this interface. We'll need to adjust the VR pawn to use this interface when grabbing, but we will take care of that at the end of this tutorial. Once we've added in these two functions to our interface, you can go ahead and close out of this interface. Later on at the end of this tutorial, we're also going to modify the VR pawn to be able to use this interface, but we're going to take care of that at the end of this tutorial. So back in the content browser, create another new folder called Blueprints. That is if you don't have one already. As you can see, I already have this folder and I've used it to create a very simple physics actor. Now, as I noted in the preview, this physics actor, I'm not going to show you how to make in this tutorial. It's very simple. All I did was just simulate physics on a static mesh that I placed in an actor and then made sure that collisions were set up accordingly. I'm not gonna show you how to go into this since there's a lot of different use cases for this and I just use this in order to simulate some object that you may have in the drawer. 
In this folder, create a new actor. In this case, I'm going to call it drawer and go ahead and open it. Once you're in your drawer, we will need to add a couple of components first. Create a static mesh component. I'm going to give this the drawer mesh that I had shown you at the beginning. Also, come down here and you want to make sure that collision is set to block all dynamic. Next, give the drawer a spline. We're going to use this to show how our drawer will slide and in what direction. This will make setting everything up much easier than guessing values and direction of our drawer. Make sure the spline has two points and that one is located at the drawer's current position. The second should be pulled forward to where the drawer should be when it is fully opened. This spline will represent the line that our drawer is going to follow in order for us to actually open this drawer. Finally, go in and open up the class settings and set grab as an implemented interface. Now that our components are in place and our actor is all set up, now we're ready to jump into the event graph. If you would like, you can delete the first two events here. We will only be using event tick for this tutorial, but we'll save that for later. First, go ahead and implement the grab and release functions from our grab interface. Then on grab, we simply want to promote the motion controller input to a variable that we can use later. On release, we're going to check if our motion controller input is equal to the stored motion controller variable, pass this through a branch, and if this is true, we're going to set the motion controller to null. This will let us see if the drawer is being held by a player and prevent us from releasing the drawer if it's not yet time. Next, let's move on to the tick. First, we need to get our motion controller variable, and we want to check if it is true by converting it to a validated get. Get the world location of the motion controller, then we'll also go and grab our spline, and get the location at spline point. We're going to do this twice, once for each of the points on our spline. We'll set one of these get location at spline points to point index one, and we're going to make sure the coordinate plane of each is set to world. Now that we have all the necessary locations, we need to find the closest point on segment. This will let us find a point along the spline for our drawer to be. Then the world location of the motion controller will go into the point and the spline point locations will go into segment start and end. The order of these does not matter. If you would like to put point index one's location into the segment start instead of segment end like I'm doing here, then you can most certainly do that. Now we have a location for our drawer. So I'm going to go and grab our static mesh and set its world location of this mesh. We're going to run this if our motion controller is valid, and then the point that we find from our segment will go into the new location. With that, our drawer is all set up, so you can go ahead and close this down, and then we're going to go ahead and jump into the VR pawn. Once you have the VR pawn open, go into the event graph. I'm going to use the input action grab left and the input action grab right. These are already in use in my example, so I'm just going to disconnect these and move them down so we can use these for our tutorial here. We're going to start with the grab left. On pressed, we're going to sphere overlap actors. The sphere position is going to come from our motion controller left's world location. The sphere radius can be whatever you choose. I'm going to choose 20 for this tutorial. Then using the object types, we're going to make an array and set index zero to world dynamic. Using the out actors from the overlap, we're going to pass them through to a for each loop with a break and we're going to check if the array element does implement an interface. And we're going to set this interface to grab.
run this into a branch. Then, if this is true, we're going to store the array element as a variable called grab left actor. Then we're going to run the grab function. Be sure to pass through the motion controller left into the function as well. Then after grab, we're going to break out of our loop. On release, we will check that our grab left actor is valid. And if it is, we're going to call the release function again. And again, be sure to pass through your motion controller left again as well. And we'll set the grab left actor to null. For the right hand, I'm simply going to copy all of this code that we just made. And change our references from motion controller left to motion controller right. And grab left actor will be a new variable that we're going to create here called grab right actor. Now our drawer is all complete. So with that, we can go ahead and, and close out of our VR pawn, drop our drawer into the level. And if needed, we can scale this drawer as well. And it is all ready to go. With that, our drawer is all set up. So now that we have this all set up, we're able to add just a little bit of extra interaction into our world and help bring it a little bit more alive for players who are exploring whatever virtual space that you are designing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And also, I'll give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters who you should see over here on the right-hand side. And with that, I will see you in the next reality.